اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ علی محمد و علیہ الطیبین الطاہرین و لعنت اللہ علیہ اعدائہم اجمعین من الان الى قیام یوم الدین Respected brothers and sisters in Iman Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Insha'Allah in the coming nights We will be remembering the movement of Our master Abi Abdullah al-Hussein May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him And we will be discussing some factors where we may be able to take lessons from lessons where we may be able to implement in our daily lives because today we are living in a world full of problems today there will not be a corner on this planet where it's not suffering from any troubles Every corner, every angle, every piece of land on this map where we call the world or this planet is suffering from either injustice or poverty or inhumane behavior or some problems that we might not think about. There are some they are going through many terrible tragedies but they don't have a voice no one hears them or there are people who hear the call of others who are in pain and agony but they do not move they do not care inshallah in the coming nights we will discuss the issues, we will discuss the problems and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to provide solutions for these issues and problems. But brothers and sisters, let me start with one of the wonderful chapters in the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran being a book where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, sent down for the guidance of mankind. And who better to carry this message and who better to carry these signs, these holy words, other than the seal of prophets and messengers, Prophet Muhammad, son of Abdullah. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and his holy progeny. If we go back to the Holy Quran and we visit chapter 91 and we start reading these wonderful, beautiful words, we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts by calling in evidence the signs in which he manifested his glory and his power in the human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّاهَا وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَاهَا وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاهَا Allah here starts by going through and calling all the signs in the point of evidence. As if he was saying, O Prophet of Allah, O my Prophet, O Muhammad, peace be upon him. Inform the humans, inform my creation, the mankind, in whom which I placed and bestowed the greatest creation I Allah has created which is the intellect, which is the mind, in which no other creation was given the powerful 
creation which we call the intellect and the mind. Tell them, remind them that your Lord, your creator, who created the sun, who created the moon, who created day and night, remind them that the same Lord, the same creator created you, O oh man. Okay, where does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to reach? Allah wants to say to us, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا In the same chapter, chapter 91, if we skip some verses, we go to verse number 9. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Allah says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا now, what is that of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, if mankind looks after and enriches that thing? Allah is saying, oh mankind, now I am speaking about your physical being. I am speaking about your internal or the soul within your body. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَ After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the physical aspects of the sun and the moon, and he speaks about the sources of the light in the sun and in the moon, Allah comes and says to man, O oh man, know that I have bestowed in you the mind and the intellect. If you take care of this mind, if you work on your intellect, if you use it in the best of ways, you will be one of those who will be a winner. You will win. Who of us doesn't want to win? Who of us doesn't want to be a winner at the end of the day? Have you seen school children on their sports day or in a competition? Once they enter this competition, they are very excited. Each one says, I am going to win. I am going to get the reward. I am going to be given a prize. Same thing goes for us human beings. All the time we are looking to be winners. All the time we are looking to receive prizes. All the time we are looking for people to praise us. This is the nature of mankind. But I will tell you how you and I can become winners. I will provide for you all the solutions. It's not from me. No, it's from the Holy Quran. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا In the next verse, وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Whoever that doesn't take care of the soul that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed in him, at the end of the day he will become a loser. Okay? He might be a winner for a couple of days. He might live a successful life for a month or two. He might not need anyone's help for a year or two or ten. But at the end of the day, and the, at the end of his lifetime, when the angel of death comes upon him and starts to withdraw his soul from his body, that man or that woman will not be able to seek help from anyone else. Yes, this is the truth. There will be a day that we will leave this world as there was a day where we entered this world. Did we enter this world by our, by our own decision? No. We came to this world without anyone asking us, do you want to go to the world that you are in now? No. At the same time, no one will ask you, are you ready or do you want to leave this world? Would you want to leave your family? Would you want to leave your wealth? Would you want to leave all your friends and family behind 
and go to a destination you do not know anything about. Many of us, when we are ready to make a journey, when we want to fly to a destination, when we want to travel to a point, we will investigate about where we are going to. We will make sure we have provided all the needs and all the requirements we need for our travel. But there is one destination that you cannot take anything physical with you. The only thing that you may be able to take with you is your good actions, is your good will, is your positive deeds, is the fact that you was able to take care of your soul. How do I take care of my soul? How does it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these verses give me the answer to my, crop, to my questions and my problems? The only answer, brothers and sisters, lies within the Holy Quran and lies with the Holy Prophet of Islam, the Holy Messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his Holy Project, where they both direct us to the Holy Household, the Ahlul Bayt, the Holy Prophet and his progeny. They are the ones where they will take us, they will show us, they will direct us to the eternal path which will lead you and me and all the people of this world to the eternal life, to the life where you will live eternally in the heavens. Try and imagine you live a life of long holidays. No work, no tiredness. You enjoy yourself all the time. You have people serving you. You have people providing everything you need for. You have people cooking for you. You have people providing nice, sweet, cold drinks for you. You have maids and servants serving you left, right and center. And all of that is a result, as a result of you living on the face of this earth. But it needs a little bit of hard work. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be ethically and morally aware of ourselves. What is ethics? And what is morals? When I come and say that Islam is a religion of morals and morality, when we hear that Islam is a religion where it has set of rules, of ethics, what is ethics? If you go back to the world dictionaries today in the English thesaurus or English dictionary, and you type in the word, the word ethics, you will find that it describes it as moral principles that govern a person's behavior or the conduct of an activity. For example, I'll give you an example of an ethical principle. How do you behave in front of your parents? What defines your parents in front of you? How do I know that my behavior with my parents of whom they were the sole reason that I came to this world? How do I react towards them? How do I speak to them? How do I behave in front of them? There are some children, there are some youth who do not know the code of conduct that they should have in front of their parents. Here, I will tell you, look at the outside world. The majority of the human beings living on this earth, they know that parents are individuals whom you should respect at all times. 
because they are older than you. Because they were the reason you came to this world. Your mother spent many nights looking after you, making sure that you was all safe and sound. She would wake up in the middle of the night and look after you and feed you and make sure you are warm, that nothing is affecting your sleep. She will stay sleepless until the morning, worried that there, were, there may be something wrong with you. Your father is the one that goes out to the world, working day and night, trying to bring back a piece of bread or a drink of water for you to grow. Now, how do we respect these parents? Now, these are our physical parents. What about our moral parents? Do you know that every single human being on the face of this earth has a moral parent? Has a parent more important than our physical parents? Yes. There is a tradition by our holy messenger, the holy prophet of Islam, Muhammad, peace, up, peace be upon him, and his holy progeny, saying, Ana wa Ali aba wa That I and Ali, his commander and his vice regent and his successor after him says, he says that I and Ali are the fathers, are the parents of this nation. Now, the same way we respect and we listen to and we adhere to our parents' advice, we have to obey and listen and adhere to the advice of our, of our moral fathers and our moral parents. The Holy Prophet and the Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, the Holy Messenger, peace be upon him, says, Husaynun minni wa ana min Husayn. Husayn is part of me and I am part of Husayn. Husayn is from me and I am from Husayn. Ahabba Allah man ahabba Husayn. Allah Almighty, the Creator that created the sun and the moon and the planets, the skies and the earth the seas and the land, just because of us, the human beings, says that anyone loves Hussein, I will love them back. Who is this Hussein? Who is his grandfather? Who is his father and who is his mother? Let's come and understand who our parents, our moral parents are. You want a cure for your problems and illnesses? Wherever you may be, in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in Middle East, in the Americas, wherever you may be, brothers and sisters, if you hear me and you understand the words that I am relaying to you, I advise you and advise myself to go and read the Holy Quran and read the history of Islam, the history of the life of the Holy Prophet and his holy progeny. The Holy Prophet Muhammad and his family and especially his grandson Imam Hussein alayhi salam. If you was looking for a cure for your illnesses, your physical illnesses, or your emotional needs and illnesses, if you was living a life of poverty, if you was living a life of fear, if you have someone depriving you of your rights, where Allah, your Lord, your God, created you as a free man and a free woman, 
but now you are living a life where you are treated as servant. Your rights have been taken away from you. There is one man that comes from a family who sacrificed their life for the sake of human beings. They sacrificed not only their lives, but their families and their children and everything they owned for the sake of you and me. So we, the human beings, can live on the face of this earth in peace and harmony. That man is called Hussein. Who is Hussein? He is known to be the master of martyrs. He is known to be the only man who remained standing on the plains of the battlefield after 72 of his companions and men were martyred and killed and severed in front of his eyes. But he never backed away because of his morals, because of his ethics. He was a man who gave his life for one thing and one thing only. And that is that all human beings would be guided to the right path. He did not gain anything from being martyred on the plains of Karbala, at least in the physical sense. He was killed. He was martyred. He left this world. But in the hereafter, in the other world, he has been given a prominent position. Now we want to receive that honor. We want to be part of the tribe. We want to follow the route of that caravan who sacrificed their lives and who receive the rewards for the hereafter. And the only way is by listening to the call of Hussein. You will be able to solve all of your issues. You will be able to find cure for all of your illnesses, whether it was physical illnesses, whether it was men emotional or mental illnesses. I know many are lying in the corners of hospitals or many are lying in corners of institutes being diagnosed with different emotional and physical and mental illnesses. Many are lying in prisons. Many are lying on the streets begging, asking for food, asking for shelter. But all of these powers around the world, all of these enormous and gigantic governments and institutes have not and are not and will not be able to provide answers for these people in need. But one person stood on the plains of the land of Karbala and said, oh people, I will give you the answer. Imam Hussein said one thing on the day of Ashura, the day he was killed and martyred on the plains of Karbala, a city in northern Iraq. He said one thing, speaking to his enemy, who outnumbered him tens of times. He said to them, if you do not follow a religion, if you are not following a scripture, 
And if you do not believe in a hereafter, if, you, if there is no belief within you that there is a life after this, kunu ahraran fi dunyakum. Be free, men. Allah created you free. So why become a slave to the desires of this pity world? Why go behind the crimes? Why bring down your mental and ethical morals to a, to a level where you will become worse than animals? In lam yakun lakum deen wa kuntum la tu'minuna bil ma'ad fakunu ahraran fi dunyakum Be free men and women. Live your life as a free man and woman. Don't become servants to this world. Don't lose the power of that intellect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qad aflaha man zakkaha. Wa qad khaba man dassaha. These are verses amongst hundreds of verses in the Holy Quran. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have bestowed in you the intellect, the brain. If you look after that brain, that intellect, you will be able to live life as a free man. But if no, you leave it, you disregard it, you take it out and throw it in the trash can, you will live life of misery. You will be a servant. You will be living in conditions worse than animals. So let's ponder and think about these points. And inshallah, we will continue this discussion and provide you with problems and solutions in the, in the future episodes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.